Welcome back to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, we are doing pre-calculus. This is uh, day three of section, or recording three of section 1.2. Uh, again, a reminder that you can go back to any sections, uh, any recordings, and again, during this recording, feel free to pause, rewind as you see fit. Uh, you are not on a timeline for this. You just need to write down what, what uh, needs to be written down and, uh, and then be able to use it in class next time. Okay, uh, just a speedy review. Uh, remember that domain is the set of allowed x values or input values. Okay, uh, and we're re abbreviating that with a D. Range as the set of possible output values or possible y values. Remember, an asymptote is a line that the graph of the function approaches, getting closer and closer, but when it, once it starts doing that, it doesn't get, uh, it's never actually going to reach it, and there are we're going to focus on vertical and horizontal asymptotes. And again, uh, there are other kinds of asymptotes that can happen. Okay, uh, this is the mess that we had last time. Uh, remember, a discontinuity is a break in the graph. Uh, we are focusing on uh, three different types. Uh, there are infinite discontinuities, which is typically uh, vertical asymptotes. Uh, could be also a gap. Uh, there are removable or point discontinuities. You can use either term. You should be able to understand what they mean. Uh, basically, it's a hole in the graph. Sometimes it's referred to. Uh, and then there's also jump discontinuities, uh, which are typically from piecewise functions, but not always. Uh, just a reminder that the location of that discontinuity is its x value. Okay. Uh, remember that increasing and decreasing is about whether the function, as you l read it from left to right, if it's going up, then it's increasing, just like a positive slope. If you are uh, seeing that the function is decreasing or going, if it falls from left to right, uh, that's again like a negative slope. And you tell where those things happen by giving an interval. Okay, so for instance, again, uh, this is increasing. Looks like it's increasing over its entire domain or over all real numbers. This again, decreasing, again, like over its whole domain or all real numbers, again here. This one, a little more exciting, increasing here to the left of negative 1, decreasing in between negative 1 and 2, and increasing to the right. Remember, you're not, you know, students sometimes get tripped up where they want to say it decreased from this y value to this y value, but again, what we're stating is what x values, what are the locations of where it's decreasing or increasing, okay? And then extremes, maximums and minimums, uh, are, again, remember they are y values, okay? And they are, and they have a location. So again, you give the maximum or minimum based on uh, what the y value is, but then its location is, uh, is its x value, okay? And again, remember relative, Max or min means it's, it's a high point or low point for the, that area of the graph, but there's still a part of the graph that keeps going higher and similarly for minimums. Okay. All right, well, the new, uh, new and final information today is about end behavior and symmetry. Again, we're going to lay down some definitions, and then we will come back and do some examples. We might squeeze a little speedy example in here or there. Okay. All right, so end behavior, shockingly enough, is behavior I know, at the ends, okay? So uh, just so you're aware, and basically how this looks is you're going to write it like this, okay? So let's talk about what this means. As x approaches negative infinity, that is the left end. Think about what a graph looks like. You have negative numbers over here, positive numbers over here, and what you're saying is as x goes to negative infinity, as we go to the left, as we go to the left, what's happening with the graph of this equation, whatever equation it is? So let, let's just throw a little graph on here just for, uh, for kicks and giggles. Uh, so let's say we have something like, like that. Okay. So as we go to the left, this particular graph is going up. Okay. So its end behavior, what is the y value actually approaching? As x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching positive infinity. That is the, the number, technically infinity is not a number, it's a philosophical idea, but it's the, the number, numerical idea that it is approaching, okay? As we go to the right, okay, so as x approaches positive infinity, as we go to the right, what is y approaching? Well, looks like it's heading on up again, still toward positive infinity, 
Okay? And you can have equations that look different than this. Uh, you can have an equation like uh, here's an exponential function that might be like y equals 2 to the x. And to the left, this is approaching actually 0. And to the right, this is approaching infinity. So they can be different. Okay. Uh, quick little side note here. This is calculus notation. We will actually see this notation uh, again the end of this year. Uh, but just so you're aware, uh, since this is specifically talking about x approaching negative infinity and positive infinity, it's actually the same exact thing as what this is. Okay? And you would state the y value that that graph is approaching in whatever box. Okay? So now the box doesn't live there. That's just, I'm just saying that's where the number would go. Okay? We will see more of this uh, when we do some examples. We have at least uh, a couple examples after this and maybe a third, I'm hoping. Okay? Symmetry. Well, you, ha you know the basic idea of symmetry. Symmetry is about balance. It's about flipping something and uh, having it look the same. It's about rotating something and having it look the same. Or folding or something like that. Okay? When we're talking about functions, there are two specific types of symmetry that we focus on generally. One is even symmetry, one is odd symmetry. Of course, I didn't follow the same order throughout my little bullet points, unfortunately. But okay. So even symmetry, even functions have reflection symmetry over the y-axis. In other words, you can fold it or flip it on the y-axis, and it looks the same. Okay. Um, here, here's a quick example. Uh, y equals 1 over x squared. Okay. If you graph this, it looks kind of like that. It has a couple asymptotes, a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. But the thing to notice here is if you do a little foldage, folding, this guy would map right onto that guy. Okay. So that's a big deal. Okay. So it has reflection symmetry over the y-axis, okay, or line symmetry over the y-axis. Algebraically, now, quick note here before I leave that, sorry. Um, this is a graphic, graphic representation. This, this is excellent evidence that it is an even function, okay, but it's not proof. If we want proof, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to use the P word. Um, if you want proof, then you have to go algebraically. And you would prove it by establishing whatever that means. Looks kind of symbolic-y looking. Remember when you do like f of 3 and you just substitute 3 in? So like for this, 3 squared is 9, so that would be 1 ninth. f of 3 would be 1 ninth. Well, same idea here. You do f of negative x. So that means instead of putting x in, the letter x, you put negative x or the opposite of x. And then let's simplify that. So negative x times negative x, the negative times negative is back to positive. x times x is x squared. And what you ought to note is this then is the same, well, that's f of x. That's the original function. So it turns out that if you change the sign of your inputs, the outputs will have the same value. If you change the sign of your x values, the y values have the same value. Okay, so if, there, if 3 1 ninth was on this graph, then negative 3 1 ninth is also on this graph. Now that would be numerical evidence, okay, but I just want you to see the, the, the specific example. Okay, so again, uh, you have, if, you're, if you're asked to prove it, you have to show with the f of x notation algebraically that f of negative x is equal to f of x. Okay? All right, an odd function, same idea, only a different kind of symmetry. So odd functions have rotational symmetry, not line symmetry, not reflection symmetry, and it's got to be specifically around the origin. In other words, 0, 0. Okay. So if I take, okay, let me just, uh, so let's say I have y equals uh, 2 over x. And if I do a little graph of that, here it is. Okay, there's 2 over x. And, and again, you can graph this in the calculator. I just happen to know roughly how it looks. Okay? Now, if I take that particular... Whoop, wow, 
That was exciting. I didn't expect the whole thing move, but that's okay. If I take that whole thing, uh, wow, that's not really exactly how I wanted that to go, but that's fine. I'll just leave it. Just picture if I spin this thing 180 degrees, okay, so spin 180 degrees, it's going to look exactly the same. This part, which was in the third quadrant, is going to be up in the first quadrant. This part that was in the first quadrant is going to be down in the third quadrant. Okay, so at, imagine putting a tack right here and then rotating this 180 degrees. Okay, not, not 360, everything will match on itself in 360, but spin it 180. Okay, that again is evidence that it is an odd function. Okay, not odd strange, but odd like odd and even. Okay, so this is an odd function. What kind of symmetry does it have? Odd. How do you know? Because it has rotational symmetry at the origin. Okay, that's good evidence. Now again, if it says prove it, then we what we have to do is do a little f of negative x, and so we do something like this. And what we would show is that if I do negative f of x, well, that would be this. Aren't those two things the same thing? So f, f of negative x, if I change the x value to the opposite, it gives me negative f of x, the opposite y value. Okay. So just a, a quick little numerical example. If I put, um, let's say I put 4 in here. Okay, so I know the point 4, and uh, now 2 divided by 4 would be uh, 2 over 4, so 1 half. Okay. Well, what if I put negative 4 in? Well, 2 over negative 4 would be negative 1 half. So again, the idea is if I do opposite x, I get opposite y. Opposite x, opposite y. That's different from even functions, because if I, on an even function, if I do opposite x, remember that was a negative x before I erased I get the same y, okay, and so again, like here I had that point uh, 3, 1 ninth, and over here I'd have the point negative 3, 1 ninth, again, same y value, even though it ends up being uh, the opposite x value, okay, and uh, one quick little note here, not all functions have either of these symmetries, like for instance, if I have y equals x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay, we did x squared minus 3 a minute ago. Well, x minus 3 quantity squared has a vertex over here. So is that symm symmetric across the y-axis? No, I mean, it would have to be matching up to something like that. And is it symmetric if, it, if I rotate it 180 degrees, does it look the same? No, it doesn't. Okay, so this would be neither or neither if you prefer. Okay, all right, so we've done actually did, done some examples in there. I, I want to do uh, a couple more, and time is going to get away from us, and we'll just get in what we can, okay? All right, so we did x squared minus 3 already, so let's do, or, yeah, let's, oh, no, we did 1 over x squared, sorry. Um, let, let's do this, x cubed minus x, okay? So what I'm going to do is a little sketch of the graph, and I happen to know that this factors into x times x plus 1 times x minus 1, because I'm sweet like that. That means my zeros, the x values that give a y value of 0, are at negative 1, 0, and 1. And remembering what I do about the shape of cubics with positive leaning coefficient, it should look something about like these. Okay? So we're going to do n behavior. And again, n behavior always looks like this. X approaches negative infinity, y approaches. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches, and all we have to do is fill in the approaches. Okay? So as x approaches negative infinity, as I go to the left, y is approaching negative infinity. That's what it's getting closer to. So you just write negative infinity there, okay? Now, you're going to have to remember this setup. x approaches negative infinity, y approaches number. x approaches positive infinity, y approaches number, okay? All right, same song, second verse. As I go 
to the right, to the right, as I stay on the function here, this thing goes up toward what number? Well, it's going towards infinity, and so there it is, infinity. Okay, quick little note. Do not get this confused with increasing and decreasing. Increasing is about left to right going up like slope, like positive slope. And where does that happen? Well, on this particular graph, it happened, uh, it, it's actually going up here from uh, negative infinity to negative 1, and also from positive 1 to infinity. Okay? That is not the same thing as having an end behavior going to infinity. Okay? Increasing is about this. End behavior is about what happens at the ends. Okay? Two different things. All right. I've hogged up my whole screen, and I still need to talk about symmetry. All right, let me block off a little section here. Okay, so odd, even, or neither. Let me rewrite the equation. Let me give you a little clue here. This is kind of sneaky. Watch this. What's the exponent here? 3. That's odd. What's the exponent here? 1. Because that's x to the 1. Same thing as x to the 1. That's odd. If all of your, if all of your exponents are odd, it's probably an odd function doesn't matter what the coefficient is here or here. Now, quick little note here. If there is a number over here with, that does not have an x, that would be times x to the 0. And 0 is not odd. 0 is even, actually. Okay, so quick little note there. If it has all odd exponents, it's probably an odd function. And yes, the converse, or I'm sorry, the inverse of that is also true. If it has all even exponents, it's probably an even function. Now, there are functions that, are, that don't have exponents at all, like cosine's an even function, sine's an odd function, tangent's an odd function, and their reciprocals uh, go along with them. Okay? All right, moving on. Okay, so th I'm thinking this is odd. Why? Because of the exponents. Now, further evidence, if I... I'm going to do a little mini graph over here so I can do what I wanted to do on the other screen. All right, so mini graph. Oh, get that out of the, I just need that out of the way. If I rotate this 180 degrees, does it look like the same graph? Let me do that again. Now remember, this is a hand-drawn graph. I'm winging it, so don't freak out. Okay? Look like the same graph? does to me. Okay, so again, this is good evidence. I think it's odd because it has rotational or point symmetry. You can say point symmetry at the origin. Or you can write at 0, 0. That's fine. Again, this is all good evidence. None of this is proof. If So if it says, what kind of symmetry does it have? Odd. How do you know? Because it has rotational symmetry at the origin. That's cool. Now, if it says prove, for odd, I'm supposed to show that f of negative x equals negative f of x. Well, let's see if that's true. f of negative x equals, now, everywhere I see an x, sorry, I wasn't supposed to have that squared there. Somebody at home is going, that squared wasn't there. Sorry, thank you. Um, everywhere I put an x, or everywhere there was an x, I have to put in negative x. Okay, so there it is. Let's simplify it. Well, negative times a negative times a negative. Back to negative, and it's going to be x to the third. Minus a negative is going to make this plus. Okay, well, what would negative f of x look like? Well, that means do the opposite of f of x. Well, if I distribute that negative now, that it's like a negative 1. So negative 1 times x cubed is negative x cubed. Negative 1 times a negative x or a minus x, this becomes plus x. 
hey, look at that, them bad boys match. Or you could say they're equal. Okay, if that's true, we have just done algebra algebraic proof, symbolic proof, that that is an odd function. Okay, so that, that's as bad as it'll get for that. Okay, all right, now we did some little fun uh, little examples in the middle of things. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do one more quick one. Here it comes. Okay, uh, a little sketch of this. Okay, so end behavior. As x approaches, negative infinity, y approaches. Okay, so let's, let's deal with that. As x approaches negative infinity, what are the y's doing? Nothing. There isn't anything. Or you could say none. Okay. Do not say zero because it's not approaching zero. There is no graph over here. Okay. There's nothing. Nothing. Okay. All right. On the right side, as x approaches positive infinity, y is going up, y is approaching infinity. That's it for that. Okay. Symmetry. Does this have balance across the y-axis? If I fold on this, does it look exactly the same? No. How about if I spin it 180 degrees? If I, if I take this whole thing and spin this around, it would actually be over here somewhere. And it's not. It's over there. Remember, it's got to spin around the origin. It's got to be like I put a tack right there, and then I spin it. Well, that's not working. Okay. Um, further evidence of nothing is that, uh, what, what's the exponent here? Well, it's one half. Well, is one half odd or even? Sorry, it's neither odd nor even. All right, I think it's a record. 22 minutes. Woohoo! All right, we'll see you in class. Bye.